In the last video, you learned about alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, as far as the three different major categories of hydrocarbons in organic molecules. Ethane, with the prefix ETHF, meaning two carbons, has the formula C2H6. What is different about ethane versus ethanol? There is a different ending. And this all ending lets you know that it's something called an alcohol, which is a type of functional group that contains a hydroxy or a, hydro or a hydroxyl. Ethanol still has two carbons based on the eth prefix. However, it has something new on it that we call an alcohol group. An alcohol group is composed of an oxygen that is singly bonded to a hydrogen, and it's stuck on carbon that is singly bonded to hydrogens and other carbons. Ethanol is ethanol because of this functional group, which makes it a different molecule in terms of its molecular behavior. This particular functional group is called an alcohol, which has a hydroxy or hydroxyl substituent on it. Hydro for the hydrogen and then oxyl for the oxygen. And it's stuck on to some other stuff which we're going to call R. The other stuff is the rest of the organic compound that is not in the functional group. So when you see an alcohol on paper and it's any OH group that is attached to the rest of a molecule. The functional group is the OH, or the alcohol, and it's usually written as R for the stuff that is not the functional group, and then the functional group itself. R is simply a placeholder for the stuff in the molecule that is the everything else that is not the functional group. Because the oxygen is bonded to the R section, then it is R and then dash OH for an alcohol functional group. A functional group has a different set of properties than the R set because the functional group changes the chemical behavior of the entire molecule. Alcohols tend to end in OL, just like the word alcohol does. A quick review of the differences between an alkane, an alkene, and an alkyne is the fact that one is a single bond, one is a double bond, and one is a triple bond, and only this one is considered to be saturated. The others, because of these multiple bonds, are not saturated. They are considered to be unsaturated. Outside of alkane, alkene, and alkyne, we already talked about an alcohol. In this example, the OH group is attached to three singly bonded carbons, and this would be called propanol. That functional group, the OH, does not have to go on the last carbon. The overall formula remains the same, however the name may change. Now that the oxygen and the hydrogen, the hydroxyl group, are no longer on what would be considered to be the first carbon, based on the priority of the OH group, the OH is now on the second carbon, from either direction, so this would be called 2-propanol, or propen 2 all That 2 simply tells you where the alcohol group is. It's on the second carbon. This next functional group is called an aldehyde. An aldehyde is a carbon that is double bonded to an oxygen, and then has a hydrogen on it, in addition to being on the rest of the molecule. This outlines the aldehyde functional group. It looks similar to the next functional group called a carboxylic acid. A carboxylic acid appears to be a combination of an alcohol and an aldehyde, but it's not. It is its own functional group that is called a carboxylic acid because this hydrogen at the end can be ionized off making it a weak acid. 
the carboxylic acid can be seen here. The name of this compound would be propionic acid. The ic acid is a clue that it is a carboxylic acid. A ketone is a functional group that is characterized by a carbon double bonded to an oxygen that is in the middle of a chain of carbons. For example, this carbon is double bonded to oxygen, but the carbon itself is singly bonded to other carbons. An amine group is a nitrogen connected to a carbon chain that is bonded to other hydrogens or carbons. There are different levels of amines. This amine consists of a nitrogen bonded to two hydrogens. And this amine consists of a nitrogen bonded to two different carbon groups and a hydrogen. An ether is an oxygen that is bonded to one carbon on either side. In this example, the ether has three carbons on one side and one carbon on the other side. In college, I remembered either as either or, either this side or that side. Notice how the ether is not an oxygen that is double bonded to one carbon, but rather single bonded to two different carbons. An ester is characterized by a carbon that is double bonded to an oxygen, then single bonded to another oxygen that is connected to another carbon set. Remember that R represents something that is a generic set of carbons that does not have a particular orientation as far as its formula. What that means is this methyl group is the second R and can be replaced with any other group. It could be an ethyl group or even more carbons added. But the most characteristic part of the ester is this, as it's connected to an R group. The last functional group that we're going to cover is called an amide. An amide is characterized by a carbon double bonded to an oxygen with nitrogen attached to it also. Just like with an amine, an amide has some substituents on that nitrogen that are either carbon or hydrogen. There are many different functional groups in chemistry. Make sure you're familiar with alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. The alcohol, the ether, the aldehyde, ketone, the carboxylic acid, the ester, the amide, and the amine. If you're interested, there's plenty of practice available in order to learn the other ones, as you may see them again in biology and chemistry courses of higher levels.